Welcome back to the Edgewater Avenue YouTube channel. In today's video, we are making the Donna One Piece. This pattern comes with two different coverage options. There is a full coverage and a cheeky coverage. And my personal favorite thing about this pattern is that the top part, you can pull completely out to separate it from the bottom. And you can just wear that as a top by itself. And the style of top is just really cute. For materials you will need, swimwear fabric, swimwear elastic. You're gonna need a loop turner because we're going to be turning some straps in this tutorial. Then you're gonna need a cutting tool as well as whatever regular sewing supplies you typically use. So for cutting, most of the pattern pieces are meant to be cut on the fold, except for the back ties. So just pay attention to the pattern pieces. There are labels on the pattern pieces now where the cutting instructions are included. So that way you can just have a quick reference as you're going. But basically I'm gonna be cutting two on the fold for every pattern piece, except for the back ties. We're gonna be cutting four, but mirrored. And remember, when you're cutting mirrored, that means that you'll cut two with the pattern piece right side up and then flip it over so it's facing the opposite way and then you'll cut two with the pattern piece on that side. And here I'm using the same fabric for the lining and the outer fabric. The way that this tutorial works, this swimsuit is not going to be reversible. The top part will be reversible, but the bottom won't. So you can use whatever fabrics you want to do this, but just be aware that the bottom piece at least will not be reversible. So just plan for that when you're choosing your fabrics. You are also going to be cutting two shoulder straps and the measurements for those are inside the pattern. For this entire tutorial, the seam allowance is one quarter of an inch or six millimeters, unless otherwise stated. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to use a basting stitch and baste together all of the pieces that are going to be sewn together. So first take out your bust pieces, both for the lining and the outer, and you're going to match them with right sides together. Using a basting stitch, you're going to sew the top line and the bottom line. You are also going to take the back ties, match them with right sides together, and sew along every open edge except for the sides. The front bottom piece, match it with right sides together, and you are going to sew the sides of the waist and the leg holes. Then for the back bottom, you're gonna match that with right sides together, sew the waist and the leg lines. All of this is marked in the written directions, so if that just went too quick or it's confusing, you can reference that. So again, a basting stitch is a stitch that's going to be temporary. It is meant to tack together our fabric so that it's easier in the next step to be sewing elastic. So to do a basting stitch, you are going to select a straight stitch on your machine and set it to the longest length that it can go. This is optional because it is kind of an extra step, but I do this with all of my pieces. It just makes it go a lot smoother when attaching elastic. Next, we're going to sew and attach elastic. So for the top, the back ties, and the bottom back, you're going to sew elastic to every seam that we just sewed. And you can do this with either an overlock stitch or a zigzag stitch, and you're going to attach your quarter inch swimwear elastic at the same time. If it's available, you can use an elastic foot like I'm using here. And remember that you do not want to stretch this elastic. You want it to sew on evenly. If you need some more information on how to sew elastic, I know it can be intimidating and tricky. I made an entire elastic series answering your most common questions, as well as doing a couple different demos and troubleshooting and that kind of thing. So I'll make sure to link that. So now we've added the elastic and we are next going to add elastic to our front bottom, but there is one area where we don't wanna put elastic. So first, sew and attach elastic to either side of the waist as well as the leg holes, right where we did our basting stitch last time. Then you're going to not use elastic and you are going to sew closed the very top of that like waist area. You're gonna sew that closed using an overlock or a zigzag stitch. 
So that knocks out most of our pieces. Now we're going to focus on the top for a little bit, starting off with our straps. So take your straps and fold them in half lengthwise with right sides together. Sew and attach elastic to the raw edges. Again, I recommend doing a basting stitch first, and then you can go in with an overlock or a zigzag stitch and attach elastic at the same time. Again, not stretching that elastic. Once you finish sewing the straps, you can take a loop tinner or a safety pin and take the straps to the right side. Our next step is attaching the straps into the back ties. To do this, we are going to seam rip where we want our straps to go. There is a strap opening marked on the pattern that you are welcome to transfer to your pattern piece, or you can just peck out where you think they should go. So seam rip an area about a quarter inch, just enough to fit the strap. You don't wanna do more than you have to. And once that's seam ripped, you're going to insert each strap inside. Since the back pieces are still inside out, when you insert the strap inside, it is going to make it so it's right sides together. Pin if needed, and then you're going to use a straight stitch to sew down each of the straps in place. Afterwards, trim any excess strap. Then once the straps are in place, you're going to take each back tie all the way to the right side and use a basting stitch and sew closed the side seams. We love a basting stitch on this channel. Again, that's just going to make it easier in the next step. Now we are going to attach the front and back pieces for the top, at the same time attaching in the shoulder straps. First, seam rip where the shoulder straps will go in the front piece. Again, you can pick out where you think this should be, or you can use the marked opening on the pattern. Then insert each back tie into the front piece with right sides together. It helps to first insert the strap, pin it, and then insert the whole back tie and line up the side seam. This way you can make sure that the straps don't get twisted. Since our back ties are right side out and our front top is still inside out, this is going to match the pieces with right sides together. Then once both of the back ties and the straps are inserted inside of the front piece, you're going to use a stitch of your choice. You can do an overlock, a straight stitch, a stretch stitch, zigzag, whatever you choose. And you're going to sew down the side seams and the straps. Afterwards, trim the excess. After you've trimmed your excess, you're going to get a seam ripper out and rip a one to two inch hole, probably closer to two inches. And through that hole, you're going to take the entire top to the right side. Afterwards, finish off that hole with either a top stitch or an invisible stitch by hand. Now our next objective is attaching the front and back bottom. First, flip the back bottom piece all the way to the right side. Using a basting stitch, you are going to sew closed the side seams and the gusset. Then with the front bottom still inside out, insert the back bottom into the front bottom. Right sides should be together. Align the side seams and the gusset. Then using a straight stitch, zigzag, overlock, stretch stitch, Whichever you choose, 
sew down across all four layers and attach the sides and the gusset. Afterwards, you're gonna get out a seam ripper and rip a two to three inch hole somewhere along an existing seam, ideally somewhere discreet. Through this hole, take the entire suit to the right side. Finish off the hole with a top stitch or an invisible stitch by hand. By this point, everything should be attached. We just need to put together the top and the bottom. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to flip over that top part of the front bottom. So fold over the top part of the front bottom piece onto itself. You're gonna to want to overlap it enough to where the top can fit through, but not too much so that there's excess. I recommend overlapping it by one to two inches. Then using a straight stitch, top stitch the overlap down into place. And this might be easier to sew with a zipper foot if you're having a tough time. The way that I like to do this is first do a basting stitch, surprise, surprise, and then I'll go in with my final stitch. Afterwards, just make sure to remove that basting stitch because you will be able to see it. Last, you're going to thread your top through the loop we just sewed, and that completes the Donna one piece. Here is how it turned out. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this one piece slash top. This is a really cute one, so make sure you grab the pattern today and I will see you next time.